Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And this is the Watchathon of Today we're going to be talking about the Myth Makers, which I pulled up my notes for and I've already lost them. Yay! Uh, it's the 20th serial altogether. It's like, I don't know, third serial of the season? No, second serial. Third? Wait, do we count Mission to the Unknown as a serial? I don't know. Uh, it, it's half a serial. It aired in the UK, but it did not air in the US. Oh. So that. I'm going to say this is the second and a half serial. <laughs> The Myth Makers, which consists of four episodes, Temple of Secrets, Small Prophet, Quick Return, which is fantastic, Death of a Spy, and Horse of Destruction, which aired from October 16th, 1965 to November 6th, 1965. That was a Joe fact. Ooh, wait, can you go ahead and right off the top tell yeah. me your favorite, the, my favorite Joe fact of these, these serials? Okay, uh, best Joe fact is uh, those were not the original titles, except for Small Prophet, Quick Return. That's... They were all supposed to be pun-based. Small Every Profit, Quick Return is the only one that uh, they fought for. The other titles included Zeus Ex Machina and uh, my favorite, Is There a Doctor in the Horse? Which will make more sense once you know what this is about, if you haven't already watched it. Uh, today we are joined by a returning special guest. This is her second episode. We're bringing back all your favorites <laughs> from That Adult Feel and how to grow the fuck up and our wedding party <laughs> it's jazz layman ah! hi everybody anything you want to tell us about uh yourself since you know the last time you were on any updates i think you just gave an update <laughs> oh yeah that at all phil yeah so since i've last been on i don't even know how long ago that was but since I have last been on, I have launched my own podcast called That Adult Feel. Joe and Tony are on the very first episode. Yay! So let's talk about the Myth Makers. Yeah, let's talk about the Myth Makers. Let's talk about it. I loved it and then hated it, but still really loved it. <laughs> All right, so episode one is Temple of Secrets, which uh, is, is the TARDIS? Yes. The TARDIS of Secrets. So we immediately start... In a fight scene between Achilles and Hector, correct? Yes. Correct. And I'm going to refer to Jez on everything because <laughs> she is going to be our uh, resident historian. That's my new title. I'm going to put it on my business cards and everything. Resident podcast historian. Fantastic. Because we don't know things, as has already previously been established. Neither one of us knows anything. See, before this, I had requested to be a historical episode because I listened to the episodes and I'm like, I, no, this is, how do they not know this? We know nothing. And I'm texting you, but it's it's weeks after the fact. It's already up. <laughs> so you're telling me that the Doctor Who team who created the show did not come up with all of the stuff for this episode? No. Th they didn't invent the Trojan horse? See, I had requested one, and then we watched this, and I'm like, this will count as my historical episode because there's so much literature and there's so much history in here. Like, I know this stuff. <laughs> I'd say it's not like a pure historical, though. No, right, because not. it mixes well, a lot of... I mean, it's not pure historical in terms of, like, actual history, but it is considered one of the few pure historical Doctor Who episodes, which they say a pure historical one is one that is set entirely in a historical period. And doesn't have any uh, real, like, aliens in aliens the past. Yeah, I think they maybe count those, but, I mean, not moving between times, not having a lot in the TARDIS. So this is one of them. We won't have any for a long time after this. But we the gunfighters and then and um Saint Bartholomew's but after this season like nothing. Which is written by the same guy, right? Yeah, the guy who wrote the gunfighters wrote this episode. So. We had to look it up because we loved this ep like we loved the way this episode was written so much. We're yeah. like, what else has he done and why hasn't he done more? 
The dialogue in this th- these episodes are fantastic. And while the dialogue is fantastic, the music is not. I don't know if it was just our recording, but everything sounded broken. <laughs> That was probably your recording because I did not hear that. But it was weird because it wasn't like, the, the you know, like the dialogue was also warped. It was just the, the music. music. One scene, it was definitely on purpose because like somebody was drunk. So they, they played a little bit of wonkety music. But like, I don't know, all of it sounded pretty bad to me. But, like that might just be bad. It might audio. just be old <laughs> and recorded off of someone's TV. But the dialogue though. Mm. <laughs> so there's not just like. Like, sparring at the beginning of this episode, there's also verbal sparring. Which is great. Okay, so they're fighting, and Team TARDIS is in the TARDIS watching them fight. Joe says, he's like, they're talking more than they're fighting, really. Or you said something about how they're also verbally sparring. And the doctor goes, if you're paying any attention, Vicky's like, don't go out there. You know, they look mean. They're fighting each other. And the doctor's like, if you're paying any attention, they're talking more than they're fighting. I thought that was great. I love when somebody says something when you're watching something, and then a character immediately says the same thing, and you're like, that's what I said. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Exactly. (laughs) We're on the same brain link. Right. I mean, Vicky basically said what I said, which is, why would you go out there and ask directions from people who are in a battle? (laughs) Like, maybe... (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) Hey, sorry, I just... Where are we? What time is it? (laughs) What year? And I don't... Okay, so the doctor goes out, and I don't understand, because later he says, like, he appeared in a flash of light. No, he didn't. I'm assuming he just stepped out of the TARDIS, so I don't... I, I feel like the TARDIS appeared in a flash of light but achilles was just too busy to do anything about it at the time his temple appeared in a flash of light and then he came out but when he told that story later he's like he appeared in a flash of light i'm just gonna truncate this a bit for dramaticism (laughs) well he's also achilles like he needs to have really good stories gotta build himself up a little (laughs) uh before we go any further because i'm about to make a comment that jez probably doesn't know about me and tony watched a reconstruction and jez you listened to an audio version right i listened to the professional audiobook which if you can get that instead of reproduction i highly recommend it i wish i would like both though like i like the visuals uh, because there's also some existing footage here here and there so this this comment probably doesn't mean much to you but the guy who played achilles uh looked an awful lot like zach wiener the creator of saturday morning (laughs) breakfast cereal he's black and white but i just assume he's bright red hair and he's got that same sort of i don't know he just looks exactly like zach wiener excellent So that's my comment. Since I didn't see anybody, were Paris and Cassandra, like, ridiculously beautiful? Paris was. Paris was. Yeah. Cassandra wasn't bad. I mean, she wasn't (laughs) like, I don't know, she's not like... I mean, it's not like she was, like, glamoured up or anything. No, See, that upsets me because those two were supposed to be, like, the most beautiful ever. Like, they pissed off the gods continually because of their beauty her hairstyle was kind of bland actually it was kind of like i don't know like sort of like a bob almost it's all right she's, she's okay <laughs> that's disappointing paris is all right though i liked paris i love <laughs> I paris. paris a lot <laughs> oh oh um, um i just want to ask one question about the audiobook uh did it have narration or yeah that's the thing with the audiobooks so these ones have the original sound recordings from the bbc it's not like people recording their televisions and then they rewrite them in a way that anytime you need narration in between to tell you what's going on they write it as if it's an actual audiobook and they bring in a professional narrator to do that who, who was your narrator um you know i don't have his name because i don't have the audiobook in front of me a lot of times they'll try to get uh like actors from the show like i know steven's done a few Mm -hmm. it's the same person that did all of them so it was a collection of like four or five different serials so i listened to galaxy four and then i listened to this one and it's the same person okay so it wasn't steven was it no because i'm pretty sure he's done a few he may have i've watched a couple of different reconstructions my first time through and then some of them use that audio uh from the audiobooks and like that with the visuals i think is a nice mix i definitely prefer this to the reconstructions because i had to watch one for mission to the unknown and it was really hard to watch they can be really especially there are ones like you said that don't have any subtitles and so you're just like listening to people shuffle about and you're like i don't know what's happening <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to deal with that for the audiobooks, but also it just, it's more comfortable to me because I listen to so many audiobooks. Like, that's why you wanted me to do 
a missing episode because I review audiobooks. So that's what I'm here for. From what I've seen, they try to they fit the narration in when people aren't talking. But like people talk nonstop during this one, so I was a little Yeah, this one didn't need a lot of narration. It was it's really easy to follow. Did you have any difficulty like distinguishing between characters? No, not at all. Anyway, what were you about to say? Who knows? That I'm was sorry. ages ago. Uh, the doctor steps out and then they're like, Zeus! Well, yeah, because what happens is, what's the other guy's name? Hector or Achilles? Hector. Hector. The guy who's not it. Who, he's, the, he's a prince, right? He's more like the best fighter for the Trojans. He's their Achilles. <laughs> gotcha. He's basically taunting Achilles. He's like, if Zeus was real, he'd come out and save you. And then the doctor walks out of the TARDIS and is like, hey, what's up? <laughs> And then Achilles is like, gonna take this opportunity and stab Hector. Stabity stab. Yeah, and the doctor's like, whoa, why? That was so uncalled for. No one asked you to do that. Achilles is like, I did it for you, Zeus. Oh, yeah, he, uh, the, the Hector says this line about if Zeus was here, I don't know, there's some comment about his beard. It said something about trimming Zeus's beard. Yeah. I don't remember the con. If you appeared in your actual form, your beard would be so brilliant it would blind me. Something like that. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, Hector was like saying if Zeus showed up, he would like attack him and like cut off his beard. Oh, yeah, he would trim his beard for him. <laughs> the doctor's like, I don't even have a beard. And then, <laughs> so yeah. that's dumb. And then Kelly's like, yeah, but that's this isn't the real you. This is just one of your... Uh... You're just appearing <laughs> as a as an old beggar man. And the doctor's like, whoa, rude. <laughs> He's like, I'm sure you'll you'll look like something different later. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Get it? Because he regenerates. I had a note about that because I thought it was so smart. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's weird because no one actually watching it when it aired knew that. Because it wasn't going to happen. So I wonder if they meant it on purpose. I don't think they, they were planning on uh, I mean, doing that yet. I mean, at what yet. point do you think it became an idea of, well, he's going to leave. How do we continue this? Like Probably how? around season four. Yeah. I had to do something. I'm like, oh, we've got rid of everybody except him. Why not get rid of him? Because he's the only uh, original cast member so far. Other than the TARDIS. The TARDIS counts. The TARDIS is the only cast member that exists through the entire series. Mm-hmm. Well, the the TARDIS does change, though. But it's still the TARDIS. Well, it's still the Doctor. I mean, the Doctor is still the Doctor, but... Any hoozles. The Doctor's like, well, peace out. And Achilles is like, no, hey. Stay. Stay. Hang out a little while. Help us win this uh, war. Which is not what you're, you're supposed to do. You know that. I'm supposed to ask gods to stay. It makes it mad. And so he's like, all right, just leave Stephen and Vicky in the TARDIS. <laughs> and then uh, we meet Odysseus. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Have you not read the Odyssey? I have not. Oh my God, Joe. Have you read the Odyssey? Me? I've read parts of the Odyssey. I've seen Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? That's like <laughs> close enough, right? Sure. I, there's a lot of classic stuff that I've not read or whatever. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's why Jez is on this episode. I'd like to. I just don't have the time. I'd, I'd like to, though. In school, we actually spent an entire semester on the Odyssey in eighth grade. We had to all assume roles that the romans would have had and like we had like jobs kind of and we had to dress up as romans because our teacher decided we needed to know what roman life was really like in order to really understand the odyssey why i don't know i mean we were in eighth grade like that was way too much for us and he was not a teacher the next year <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure i i read uh, the old man in the sea well, that's something I mean, that's within the last century, but still. I read To Kill a Mockingbird. And that and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I've actually read like three Jules Verne books, so that's something. And even if I had read The Odyssey, doesn't necessarily mean I'd know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, I've mispronounced lots of names. <laughs> no, but you would definitely understand this episode much better. Yeah, that's probably true. This episode is based on a couple of different things. It's based most closely on the Iliad, which is Kind of like fan fiction of the Odyssey. <laughs> and then parts that I will get into later. I don't want to say the title of it because that might ruin things. <laughs> There's a Shakespeare play and there is... Hamlet? No, Hamlet did not write anything. No, I mean, it's Hamlet's a plus <laughs> Shakespeare play. Not everything's Hamlet, no. Joseph. <laughs> That's one of two Shakespeare plays I've read. I don't know. I'll get to it when I'm not going to spoil anything. All right. Because that's like episode four. So it's based on the Iliad, and it brings in characters from Greek mythology. Is it based, I mean, in the Odyssey as well, right? Well, the the Iliad is 
based off the Odyssey. That's... So, yeah. So both, though. Well, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, we meet Odysseus. Odysseus. I said Odysseus. And you said... <laughs> you just said it a third way. <laughs> what? <laughs> o- Odyssey? Say it one more time. Odysseus. 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 There you go. Odysseus. Odysseus. He us. <laughs> oh, this he us. Okay. Which he's this sort of craggly looking guy with scarred face and a bit grumpy. I like him. He's grumpy, but he's but in a jovial way. <laughs> and he's like, temple, pasha. It's too small to be a temple. And the doctor's like, it's, it's portable. It's travel size, obviously. They show up and they take the... Uh, the doctor prisoner. Yeah, yeah, which is a weird exchange that kind of happens. Where Achilles is like, it's Zeus. Now I'm afraid to say it. <laughs> Odysseus. Odysseus. You should be more afraid to say Achilles. <laughs> I Well, Achilles, I you use though and like... Achilles heel. Yeah, Achilles comes up. <laughs> but Odysseus is like, nah, he's just going to be my prisoner. Let's take him back and see if he's really Zeus. He's not Zeus though. <laughs> but this will be fun. <laughs> so they all head off. And uh, the Trojan, Trojans come up and see the TARDIS. They take it as a trophy. Yeah, it does, I don't think it actually reveals it just yet, but yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, the one guy leaves a, like, shield there, and that's it. But then eventually, yes, they take it as a trophy. Paris. Paris takes it. Paris! I don't know, Paris. I don't think he even knew what it was. Or cared. That it had any relation to the Greeks. He's just like, this thing looks cool. <laughs> and everyone will be so proud of me, and they'll be so happy when I bring it back. They'll say, Paris, good job, Paris. Paris, we love you. I'll say, that's all I ever wanted. I'm not going to lie. Multiple times I thought of Andy Dick's character from The Lion King 2 in regards to Paris. Because he just wants to please his parental figure. (laughs) And that's my favorite aspect of The Lion King 2. I mean, not that bad. Yeah, no, not that bad. Like, he's more worried about He's a lot more cheerful than... uh... I mean, he's got plenty to apologize for he's got some making up to do that's probably why he's buttering everyone up right <laughs> right they hint at that a lot but they i don't think that it... well because that's kind of common knowledge <laughs> or it should be everything's kind of his fault <laughs> oh yeah everything is his fault what happened give us the history <laughs> for those of us who don't know not me the listeners <laughs> the who don't know. so the background of this episode is that it takes place in the trojan war which was started because Paris kidnapped Helena or Helen, depending on which version you listen to or read. He kidnapped her. She was married to a Greek and they went to war over it. She had the face that launched a thousand ships. Did you not see that that scene that I, that I really laughed at where he's like, that whole Helen thing, that was a, that was just a misunderstanding, right? Like, we shouldn't be, that was just a, that was silly. We shouldn't be fighting. That's why that scene was so great. This is like 10 years after that. <laughs> right? The guy who's, who's at the very beginning of this episode, that's her husband where he's kind of like, nah, I'm fine. She's she's gone. I didn't much care for her. Yeah, that was... I loved that part. <laughs> What's the line he says? Frankly, I was happy to see the back of her. That was so funny to me. He was great. <laughs> he just is very, like, bored with the whole thing. He's like, we've been at war for ages, and frankly, it's boring. Yeah, he's like, I'm kind of ready for a new wife. Like, I don't care about that one. Right. He's like, and don't... Don't put all this on me. You oh, right. you wanted to be at war because there was stuff that you wanted, and now you're trying to put it on me when I don't even really care about my wife, to be honest. <laughs> like I, that's I'm the just... drunk guy, right? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, that's his brother was drunk. Oh, so well, I... that, maybe they were both drunk in that scene. I don't remember. It was Ag- Agamemnon and his brother. Yeah, Agamemnon's brother is the one that does, like doesn't want to be involved in anything. Yeah, he's just he's just bored of everything entirely. He just he's wants like, to Can go, we just home. go home. Yeah, because <laughs> they've been there for ten years. Uh, well, before that happened, Vicky and Stephen argued. Stephen left. Vicky stayed behind in the TARDIS. Then the Trojans take the the take TARDIS. The... Yeah, because yeah, Stephen's not Stephen in there left, but when Vicky's they take it. Isn't it because she is. twisted her ankle in the last? Well, not the last serial. But earlier. Uh, yeah, because the last serial they weren't in, which is just one episode. Whatever. Anyway, then what happened? Okay, so the, the, they're having their drunken conversation, Agamemnon and Aggie's bro. <laughs> I'm saying that name, right? Agamemnon? Yeah, Agamemnon. Yeah, you're doing good okay. with that. I don't remember his brother's name. It was like Melanius or something. I did not write that one down. He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't do anything the entire serial. That's why he doesn't remember. That's basically his only scene. Right. No, he's in later. He, well, he's in it later, but, but not it's... not anything significant. Yeah, right. It's pretty much it's the pre- same every, scene again. Where every he time like, he's there, he's just like, I don't want to, 
Why are we doing this? <laughs> this Can we stupid. just go home? Come on. See, now it's just a matter of pride. Like, no, we need to reclaim our house's honor. Like, this has nothing to do with you or your stupid wife. Like, we're at war, man. Uh, but then he's, like, saying that uh, uh, Agamemnon's like, I'm going to issue a challenge on your behalf. And you're going to fight Hector. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Going to kill Hector. Achilles comes in and is like, I killed Hector. He's like, well, Zeus, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, speaking of, uh, there's Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor plays it up, plays up being a god. This Is this the second time Team Tardis has person pretended has pretended to be, to be a god? god? I think, I believe so. That's so silly. And they're like, well, we're just going to keep you a semi-prisoner until we figure out what you are. If you're actually Zeus or if you're not. We don't want to offend you if you are a god, but we don't want you to if fuck us over if you're not. Spy. Technically, you're a prisoner, but we're going to treat you like a guest and give you food and stuff. And the doctor's like, okay. Ham bone. Right. <laughs> Ham bone. Meet the sort of butt monkey of the episode of the serial. Yeah. Uh, Why the cy- does his exist? What did his character accomplish or contribute to the entire serial? Absolutely nothing. He just sees stuff and then he doesn't. He's there to relay messages. That's like his whole thing. But he doesn't really do anything. Like there's one, this is spoiling way later. Yes, I say there's one thing at the very end that I really liked with this character, but it actually has nothing to do with him. It has to do with Vicky, but I don't want to get there yet. But for the most part, I don't understand why this character is here. Odysseus. Fuck, I probably said that wrong. Odysseus. It's his light little minion. He's mute and uh, missing an eye. And... Which is like, That's... seems to be a running theme. <sighs> this is not like the first time we've had like some characters, like minion character who is like disabled in some way. You know, I don't think it's the first time that guy has, has played? played that kind of character. I think he might have been Ibrahim. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he was Ibrahim. I might be wrong about that, but I think he was. What happened? I don't even remember that character name. Uh, Ibrahim was the guy that, like, tied Ian to the ground and was going to, like, feed him to the ants and stuff. And then, like, Ian gets out and is like, well, you're you're my sidekick now. That guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That whole thing was ridiculous. I forget what serial that was. The Crusades. The Crusades, thank you. Ibrahim from the Crusades. I think maybe he was Cyclops. Uh, I thought Cyclops was like a big monster with one eye. That's part of the joke. That's why they call him Cyclops. Okay. It's it's a joke? Part of a joke later. I, did, I must have missed that joke. It's really subtle, but it really made me laugh. So yeah, okay, so we got Cyclops as a spy who just sort of, he's just basically creepily watching lots of scenes, and I guess he's relaying information, but we never really... It never really affects the plot in That way. much, yeah. yeah. Odysseus meets Stephen. He gets Stephen. And it keeps him as prisoner, He too. takes him as prisoner and is basically like, I'm gonna take you, and Stephen's like, I'm just a traveler, I don't know shit. I don't know this doctor person. Right, and he's like, bullshit, you're coming with me, and he takes him into the camp, and who does he call him? What? What god does he call him? I think he calls him Apollo. Yeah, he's like, this is my god that I found wandering the plains. This is Apollo. We gotta treat him like, like just, you know, being an ass, basically. And then, like, Dr. Zeus... Dr. <laughs> it's all like, I'm gonna perform a miracle and uh, kill Steven here in a, some, a flashy display at my temple. Ha, take me back to my temple tomorrow and I'll, <laughs> I'm gonna do a magic, I mean a, a miracle. Not a magic trick, a miracle. Right, because they want to kill Steven and basically Zeus is like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him as a sacrifice to myself. And then they're like, Which all right, but your temple Zeus. is gone. Ha. What? Whoa. It was, it was what? Uh, oops. That is the end of Temple of Secrets. And we are now into episode two, Small Prophet, Quick Return, which was a great Disney movie. Small Prophet, Quick Return sounds like like one of those old, like, 60s Disney movies with, like, Don Knotts and Tim Conway. The apple dumpling. You have no idea what I'm talking about? you never seen, like, you the old... You just said a random string of words. <laughs> you don't know who Don Knotts and Tim Conway are? Uh, oh. I uh, who am I asking? <laughs> so disappointing i think they did a movie called small deposit quick return which is they like accidentally kidnapped some kids or something i don't remember how do you screw up that badly they wind up really liking the kids and then they sort of become a family it's like real stockholmy i don't i think maybe the kids accidentally got in their car while they were robbing a place i don't know it's been a long time since i've seen it anyway i'm just gonna be referencing obscure things that no one knows and know nothing about the things everyone knows about <laughs> You're welcome. I'm like, the Iliad, I don't know. The Apple Dumpling Gang, <laughs> that's a great film. It had a sequel. That's how popular it was. <laughs> I mean, that means nothing. I think it was the Apple Dumpling Gang Rides Again. I think you're right. Jez knows. She's our 
resident historian for a reason. <laughs> so yeah, the TARDIS is gone. Uh, there's tracks to Troy. Which? Who's Troy? <laughs> Look at Jez's face. She's not amused. <laughs> She's not amused in the slightest, you guys. I'm pretty sure that's a, isn't that a high school musical character? Yes. Yes. It's just a big Disney thing. <laughs> so, where are we? So we're in Troy with the TARDIS. Well, before that, like... So basically, these the, footsteps are leading to, to Troy, Troy. So you guys are obviously spies. Yeah, and so they're we're like, well, them. screw it, let's tell the truth. Right. And they start to tell the truth, then we cut to the next scene. Which they're about to like, say, so we travel in this box through time and space. <laughs> and that's How many the times do they do us? that? They do it, like, over and over again. This just, like, blows my mind. He's like, you better tell me the truth or you're dead. And they're like, okay, so we'll actually tell the truth. I'm like, why would you tell the truth that you're time travelers? People in Greece are not going to believe you. Spoilers, what? he does. He does. He does. <laughs> like, that, that was stupid enough that you had to be telling Yeah, the it's truth. like, you would never tell me that story if it was not true. Because that's, it says here Paris, Hec- I, it said he was Hector's brother. So they're both sort of princes. Yes, Hector is the oldest. I looked it up while you were talking about other random stuff. Hector was the oldest son of Priam. Ha! I was right. He was a prince. Score one for Joe listening to the episode. Yeah, Paris brings the TARDIS to daddy. And Cassandra's they like, not having it. Yeah, Cassandra thinks Paris is an idiot. He is. That's true. <laughs> I love him. Basically, but Cassandra just basically talks about this dream she had, which is basically it's a Trojan TARDIS. They just do this whole Trojan horse thing with the TARDIS, but then we're later gonna get spoilers the actual Trojan horse. And they're like, Can't, well, what's inside of it? And you're like, I don't know, it's locked. I'm like, you brought it here? You don't even know what's inside it? There could be bears. They don't say bears. Trojan bears. So like, there could be a whole army in there. And Paris is like, no, look at it. Like, you could fit like two medium-sized soldiers in there. <laughs> and then, of course, I think it's Cassandra who's like, uh, one medium-sized si- soldier is enough to open a gate. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love Cassandra's character because it's so in line with the canon. The canon or the fanon? The canon. I really wanted her to be beautiful because her story is that she's super beautiful. She catches the eye of Apollo. He falls in love with her. She turns him down. So he curses her with being able to see the future, but have no one believe her on anything. So now every time she tells someone in this serial, like, oh, this is going to happen. They're like, oh, Cassandra, shut up. When have you ever been right? She's like, every single time. Every time. Every time I've been right. No one fucking listens to me. That's me. But I like it especially in here because... Because they've added this sibling aspect between her and Paris. Where it's like, yeah, no one believes you. But it's also like bickering siblings. It's also just your brother. Like, shut up, Cassandra. God, you're always so emo. (laughs) (laughs) That's basically the dynamic between the two of them. The whole family is sort of like a, almost like a stereotypical sitcom family. It's fantastic. I love it. It's a very believable, believably written family. Priam's the frustrated dad, the emo daughter, the dumb son. Right. And then the lovable son, who is Troilus. <laughs> oh, yeah, which I did not notice him at all in this until, like, I don't think he became. He was. Until Vicky did. Until, like, until the prison cell scene. I not that much until then, was he? He was there, like, when Vicky's first talking to Priam, because Priam keeps trying to get information out of her, and she's like, Who's your son? Like, he's really cute. That's, yeah, that's the first time I think he's really in it. And he's like, yeah, you know, he is. People like him. But you were telling me something. She's like, yeah, but tell me more about Troilus. <laughs> that could have just been part of the at being reconstruction. I didn't really notice him. I don't well, know. I don't think he was really in it up until that point. That's the thing. I yeah. think when Vicky's talking about him is the first time he's really. I think so. I don't think he was there before. I honestly did not notice him until, like, the prison cell flirting scene. So, I was like, wow. She's, she was talking about liking him before, like, That's the I thing. even he noticed had, him. He hadn't been in it. She had, they had flirted, like, off screen. Okay. Anyway, they're like, we're going to burn the TARDIS since it's so bad. That's what Cassandra wants is to do. Pissed. That's mine. Like, I brought that all the way. Well, it's before that the there desert. was, there's, like, this argument of Cassandra's like, take it back out. And Paris is like. You know, it's kind of heavy. Like, like, can we just leave it here or no? Dad, you know how Cassandra gets. Let's just leave it here. Right. Uh, By the way, Jez, check your phone. I sent you a picture of Cassandra. I saw it. So how does that picture make you feel? Not quite worthy of Apollo. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Like, she's she's a pretty good looking person, but is she enough 
to bring on the scorn of a god. I don't know. Well, Vicky goes to look for clothes while they're setting up the TARDIS to burn. That's a great thing in the audio. I don't know if that was really in the reconstruction, but the narrator made a comment about how it takes her a really long time to find the perfect outfit and she's getting very frustrated. For us, it was just a little description of like some of the outfits that were in there. Like there's like a 20s flapper Which uh, made me really excited because someone wears that later. Wait, 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 later someone wears it. Because there's Probably. only one prop department for the entire BBC. <laughs> <laughs> so then we come back to Stephen and the Doctor, and they're like, and that's our story. And they totally believe them. Greeks will believe anything. Pretty much. Not gonna kill you, but you're gonna have two days to come up with a plan to save our asses. And, uh... And this is where things get fun. <laughs> Yeah, then, but then we cut back to Cassandra. They're like, if you're not Joe, you've heard about the Trojan War. <laughs> <laughs> I know about the horse. <laughs> I've seen Peabody and Sherman and 9,000 other things that have referenced the Trojan horse. <laughs> I even knew the I remember. even knew the name Agamemnon. That was the only name I knew. I I've have heard a Cassandra. very specific memory of it was like a Halloween party that like my mom was hosting at like our house. It was like my family, and I remember that like one of my cousins was telling us stories, but it was basically the Trojan War. It's like I was, I was like eight or something, and I remember being like, "Yeah, this is the best." <laughs> And I wish I could remember which one of my cousins it was who was telling us. But that's what, where I first heard, like, the story of Achilles and all that stuff. I know about the heel. That's all I knew. But yeah, then Cassandra's uh, like, I want to ask for a sign if whether or not we should do things to this TARDIS. And then Vicky appears, just opens the door and steps out. And she's like, I'm from the future. Which is- Why does it- Okay, that's a thing with this these early seasons. Everyone's pretty open about, yeah, we travel through time. Like, they get in, like, the slightest <laughs> bit of, like, trouble- they're like, yeah, we're from the future. Or we're no, from but I like the, this, though. You know. Because the doctor steps out, and they're like, whoa, you're Zeus. And the doctor's like, yes. Yes, huh. I am. Vicky gets out, and they're like, are you a god? And Vicky's like, no, I'm not anyone important. I just travel through time. There's no games there. Vicky's just going to be straight up with you. And then they're like, what's your name? And she's like, Vicky. And I'm like, mm, no. No, that's not... No. Uh, we're gonna call you Cressida. How about that? That's the moment where I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she's staying. Well, there's that. and There's like a million references. But the fact that they named her Cressida, oh god, I know what's gonna happen. Because that's the other major source that they pulled from is the story of Troilus and Cressida, which is actually not a Greek myth at all. It's a medieval story set in the Trojan War. So it was first written by Chaucer. Then it was made into a much more popular play by Shakespeare. It's drawing most on the Shakespeare. Would that be Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> no, it's called Troilus and Cressida. It's one of Shakespeare's historical plays, but it's also like a drama, and it doesn't exactly end well. It doesn't end well? No. Oh, Tony's making a face. Listen, I just don't understand how if you have been traveling through time, you live in an era where there's Wi-Fi and all kinds of fancy fucking future technology. I'm not giving any of that shit up for a boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. This is why I think it's interesting that I ended up on this episode. Because the last one I was on, we went through the exact same thing with Susan. In many ways, I feel like Vicky's character is there to be an answer to Susan. She's there to bring certain Susan qualities but also to improve upon them and they're like okay well Susan didn't really have a choice when she left like it was decided for her even though it's what she wanted Vicky throughout the entire serial after this point is telling you exactly what she wants that boy is cute and she's telling every single person around her I could live here I would consider staying and no one takes her seriously but she's saying it throughout the entire time so when she does make that decision it's like Okay, we don't really have a good moment of her saying goodbye to the TARDIS. Which sucks. But she does make that decision for herself, at least. She's not been like, oh, I'm gonna kick you out because this will be good for you. It's Vicky's in control of Vicky. Oh yeah, all the time. That's just how she operates. <laughs> our, our reconstruction said she hugged the TARDIS before leaving. I don't know if your audiobook had that or not. No, it did not. It didn't mention anything. It was just like, the doctor left, and then an as 
an afterthought to Stephen. He's like, no, 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 it's okay. She's fine. Well, in ours, it's like she goes to talk to the doctor inside the TARDIS. They're in there and you don't see it or whatever. And then she gets out, hugs the TARDIS, and then leaves. And the doctor watches her leave. That's cute. Yeah. Which is, that's getting way ahead. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> you guys, Vicky leaves this episode. <laughs> There's Cressida. And I'm like, oh, crap. This is going to be bad. It bugged me that they're like, we're not going to call you Vicky. We're not going to call. I mean, I get that they're just doing it to make her, you know. Fit within a thing. Yeah, but it's like, just call people by their name. She said their name's Vicky, call her Vicky. <laughs> I, I'm going to start doing that to my friends. They're just uh, People are going to introduce themselves. I'm like, no, I'm going to call you, you, you Bob. I deal with it on a daily basis. It's the worst thing in the world. Do you, Jess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, at work, be like, They'd be like, what's your name? I'm like, my name is Jez. I'm like, okay, Janice. I'm like, that's not at all what I told you. I think it's Jeff. 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 I think people hear J O S F. It's like well, that middle part is what gets lost. They'll get it when they say, this is Joe. And I'll go, hey, Jeff. No, I said Joe. Well, I, I don't correct anybody. I'm just like, yep, no, okay. I'm Jeff now. I correct people now. But they don't listen to me. My name is Tony, oh and his God. name is Joe. Oh, my God. We're going to tell this <laughs> which, story. Yeah, we're going to tell this story, which are both fairly gender-neutral names, which means people get us mixed up. Well, one specific person in our building <laughs> had went for months thinking months. that his name was Tony, and he did not correct her. <laughs> Okay, let me... Okay, so the first time I'm, like, heading into the apartment, she's like, hey, Tony, and I didn't really hear her. And I was like, I, I couldn't tell if she said Tony or Joe, because it just sort of muffled, and I was like, hey, and then just sort of went on. I was like, wait, did she call me Tony? I don't know. <laughs> and then the second time it happened, I was like, oh, wait, she did say Tony, but I didn't correct her, because I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, okay, so that's what she said. That and is what done. she said. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, shit, now it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. And then it went on forever until, like, every time I'd walk by, hey, Tony, hey, Tony. And I'm like, I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> so <laughs> recently, I'm helping him bring laundry down to the laundry room. And he's like, the girl who thinks my name is Tony, she's out there. And I was like, all right, Joe, here's what I'm going to do for you. <laughs> We're going to walk by her and I'm going to be like, hey, Joe. <laughs> and that didn't work. It didn't work. She goes, hey, Tony. Actually, then, it did because she goes, because I think she she said, hey, Tony. And then it kind of like. You went, hey. Hey. And, and she's she, like, I don't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go, my name's Tony. Well, who, let's, no, what's his name? That's Joe. That's Joe. I've been calling him to <laughs> And I was like, I know. I didn't know what to do. I'm a terribly awkward human being. I'm going to go die now. <laughs> And now, now, every time I see her, she's like, I thought you were Tony. <laughs> I know your name now. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this might be worse. Now I'm just embarrassed every time I see you. <laughs> uh. It's okay because she feels embarrassed though. Yeah. Because she called you by the wrong name. <laughs> But I didn't correct her. That is not the first time that that's happened. People are like, those are Joe Joe and Tony. Tony. And then they're like, yes. Which one's which? (laughs) Who's Jeff? Joe, Tony, and Jeff. I had somebody say, who's uh, who's Kevin? Kevin? Kevin's our Wi-Fi. Oh, I didn't even know that. You named it. No, No, it's not Kevin. It's It's Eddie. Eddie. I don't know who the fuck Kevin is. (laughs) Eddie. Eddie. It's Eddie. Uh, Eddie the shipboard Eddie, computer. Yeah. That's oh. why our Wi Fi's name is Eddie. And so someone I, someone was calling you Eddie and I was like, I don't know who you're talking about. And like, your husband Eddie. And I'm like, <laughs> my husband's name is Joe. He's like, Oh, well your Wi Fi's Eddie. And I'm like, one, how do you know which of the Wi Fi's is mine? Like, I'm going home and changing my password. And <laughs> His name is Joe. So now that everybody's thoroughly confused, where are we? <laughs> I have no idea. What? <laughs> Let's skip to the part where the doctor is trying to cope with a plan. Okay, yes. Because here's the fun part. This is the best joke. Because he's like, I do not want to say horse. <laughs> he doesn't. And That's Stephen's stupid. Like, <laughs> it's a myth. It's beautiful. He goes, we could use the Trojan horse. Goes, but that was made up by Homer. That's not real. That didn't happen. So I'm not going to suggest it. That's dumb. What I'm going to suggest instead is paper airplanes and rubber bands. <laughs> that's episode three, though. Oh, okay. Sorry. He doesn't come up with it yet, but that's that's a suggestion. Steven's like, you know what? Whatever. I'm just going to go try to save Vicky. Is that okay? <laughs> you do what you want to do. I'm going to go do that. I've got a note here that says Aggie wants Odysseus, Odysseus to fight Paris in Achilles' stead. I don't know what that's about. I don't remember. That happened. Well, when Stephen leaves, he takes on 
somebody else's name, and that's when he dresses up as a Greek. Diomedes. A Greek. Diomedes, that's the name he takes on. Which is also in the original myth. Did Paris, like, cap for him or whatever? Mm, I mean, I think it was before that, like, he was a major player. So people know that name, which is why I think they chose it, which no one in Troy knows, like, they probably, like, heard that, but they definitely don't know that he's dead. So they take him, they take his clothes. I like how he's like, my friend died, he's about the same size as you, take his clothes. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> he's got a wife, too, if you want her. That's convenient and also sad. Uh, Stephen, or Diomedes, bumps into Paris. They have a bit of a... <laughs> a b- it's good, you guys, this scene is good. <laughs> bit of a back and fourth battle that steven immediately throws and is like i give give. you are a great warrior i humbly ask that you take me as your prisoner paris is like but that can you do that i don't (laughs) is that allowed paris is like no you're you're supposed to die like that's the rules but you're so good paris is like yes i am (laughs) thank you steven says i can tell people back home just how great you are paris is like this is an excellent idea i love it (laughs) Let's yes. go. And then his next thing is, I want you to meet my dad. Tell my dad how good I am. Tell tell my dad what you just said. Tell him. <laughs> what is, what is the, the little bit of flattery? Does anyone remember that he, he gives Paris? He's just like, every, back, well, everyone back at home is all like super feared of Paris. If it had been anyone else, I'd have been fine, but not Paris. No one can fight up against him. He's like... Yeah. This guy, we should all listen to him. But he brings him in and like, Vicky is the worst <laughs> at keeping things on the DL. Vicky doesn't, she's too straightforward for this nonsense. She's like, Steven. He's like, shh, Vicky. Oh, I said her name. Damn I, it. I'm also the worst. And then Cassandra's like, spies. They are spies. Guards, kill them. That is the end of episode two, Small Prophet, Quick Return. Which, by the way, the small prophet was Vicky. That is the pun there. She is a prophet and she is tiny. If you watch our thing called, what's that level called? The, the Watch Along of yeah. Salon. If you watch, If you watch us watching the episodes, at the very beginning of it, Joe and I were both like, I hope the small prophet's Vicky. That would be so cute. And at the end of the episode, we're like, yeah. <laughs> and we are now to episode three, Death of a Spy, which is a little misleading, but not entirely inaccurate, which we'll get to in a second. But um, and then immediately, like, it does a recap, and uh, because Angela's like, they're spies, kill them. And Paris goes, no, what, no. Kill anybody? That seems so rude. This is my guy. I brought him here. I brought like, him here, and he says nice things about me. You're not killing him. And his and his dad's a little bit impressed, <laughs> as you know, impressed as this nonchalant guy can get. And, the, and that's when Stephen starts playing it up. Oh yes, he's fantastic. And then he's sort of like Priam's, like Vicky, you gotta save Troy or else. Okay, cool. So right. like uh, Vicky and the Doctor are in the exact same positions on opposite sides. Vicky, of course. Also has heard of the Trojan War. But she so doesn't... this makes her a little nervous. <laughs> She's like, uh, beware horses. No, she doesn't say that. That's what I would say. I would totally... You can't say that, though. I would. It's the one fucking thing I know. I'm gonna you... save my ass. There's an interesting line in there, though, when Prime is like, Trojans would do anything for a horse. We praise them. There are gods. Because I don't care what's on the line. We're gonna do something for a horse. And Vicky's like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's essentially what happened. And that's when she starts gossiping with him about his son. She's like, so anyway, tell me some more about your son and not horses and how everyone here is probably going to die. Uh, so is he single or... <laughs> Which every scene with Troilus is just him going, uh, do you li- do you like Steven? I'm is just- Steven uh- like your boyfriend or... Which is in the original, actually. That's something from Shakespeare. But there's this whole thing, like, he gets confused. He's like, oh, Cressa doesn't doesn't love me. She loves this other dude. And she's like, no, no, I don't. That's just my friend. You know what friends are? Are you aware? Vicky's, like, ever so slightly offended that they think that she's dating Steve. And she's like, no? Why would I date him? He's like a Rouse. brother. They have the best relationship. Oh, oh I'm going to miss it. We, uh, we'll get to it eventually, but there's a scene that made me really sad. So now we have uh, the doctor and his paper airplanes, which that's literally what he's like, look at, uh, uh. He may fall a paper airplane and is like, look at this. He's so clever too. Like you get this idea that he thinks he just invented the paper airplane. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Odysseus is like, yeah, my, my kid, kid makes, makes that and throws him at his teacher. And it's annoying as shit. <laughs> and the doctor's like, great, so you already know what I'm talking about. 
We're gonna put it in a giant bow and fling you over the wall. Genius, am I right? That is so much better and so much less ridiculous than a very large horse. Catapults, my friend. Catapults. He's like, all right, uh, it's gonna be you, though, Doctor. <laughs> You're gonna be the first man to fly over the wall. The Doctor's like, oh, uh, back to the drawing board. So I was thinking, what do you think about a horse? <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to him, Pulling out the Trojan horse. Vicky and Steven are, are in their cells bickering like they do. And it's adorable. That's another conversation where Steven's trying to have like an actual conversation. And Vicky's like, so what do you think about that Troilus? <laughs> I don't, and he's like, I don't know. If you think he's so great, why don't you marry him? She was like, hmm. <laughs> and she does make multiple mentions within this one conversation. Like, you know, I could really get used to this place. I could see myself living here. And he doesn't pay attention to it at all. No, there's no reaction. And then the Cyclops shows up and uh, Steven's trying to tell the Cyclops everything. That's the joke that I love. It's like, oh, someone's like outside. And he looks like, it's the Cyclops. And Vicky's like, what? (laughs) 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 Because she knows the Cyclops monster from the myth. He's like, no, no, no. it's, It's just a dude. She's like, oh, okay. By the way, that's that scene. It's utterly pointless. Nothing really happens with this plot. He's trying to get them a message like, don't attack yet. Give us time to get out of the city. And then that message never gets back to them. He dies. Yeah. He gets stabbed. That's the spy that dies. Paris's soldiers or whatever stabs him. And Paris is like, ooh, no. Oh, he could have been an okay guy. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 Paris. Like, that's it. The Cyclops is just there. He's, like, creepily following everyone around, doesn't do anything, and then dies. That's it. The end. He doesn't contribute in any way to anything that happens. But the episode is named after him. Yes. Death of a Spy. He's there the you spy. Go. That's, that's what I was referring to, yes. But before he can even really finish telling, Stephen can finish telling his tale to the Cyclops, uh, Troilus interrupts. And we have like a long scene of just Flirting. him and him and Vicky just flirt, flirt, flirt. He brings her dinner. He's like, I'm not allowed to talk to you. I'm not allowed to see you, but I brought you some food. Well, Vicky is like, uh, what about Stephen? Stephen would probably like some food. He's like, no, I don't care about him. He's not cute. He's a Greek. Greek. He loves Steven so much. I right? know you marry him. <laughs> that, is, that does basically happen. And then we do have the doctor uh, brings up the horse and he's like, well, that's a great idea. Gonna put you in it. God damn it, says the doctor. I That was not part of the... <sighs> I don't want to be inside this horse. Why? You, I just want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Which there is some, the doctor is very uncomfortable with the fact that he's basically, you know, handed this instrument of war over. Which isn't a great place to be morally. Even though it's like, this is what happens. It's the story. I know it. I've heard of it. Now it's my fault. (laughs) Apparently a very recent episode of Doctor Who addressed what just happened in this episode, by the way. Uh, Uh, Bootstrap Paradox? Yeah. Uh, Apparently there's a whole scene where Twelve is talking to the camera about was, from, uh, was it from the episode i thought it was just like from a promotion no i think it's from the episode he's just saying like you know time traveler really likes what was it beethoven or something like that and goes back to meet beethoven but beethoven's not there and no one knows who he's talking about so he basically becomes beethoven and makes the music and stuff but like where did that music come from this just happened but with the trojan horse <laughs> where like, did the trojan horse came come from Mm. Which is great because he's like, yeah, Homer made that up. That's just literature. And he's like, well, I guess, I guess he didn't. Sorry, Homer. You were right. <laughs> I do. I love the whole, the show drags its feet on the idea of the Trojan horse. And the whole time you're like, it's coming. I'm waiting for it. I know we're going to see the actual Trojan horse. But the show's like, no, no, that's, that's, we're not going to do that. That's silly. That's too silly. And it's like, no, you're going to do it. It's played very nicely, I think. So they all, they all climb inside the horse. They leave it out in the, the desert or whatever like you do and uh the remaining greeks or whatever sell off to give the illusion that they're leaving the trojans <laughs> find the horse and then troilus comes into vicky and's like uh the greeks are gone oh by the way i totally skipped over there's a small scene where steven tries to escape but it doesn't go anywhere so he basically got shoved right back into his cell so that was kind of pointless so that's why i didn't bring it up but i brought it up anyway so hey <laughs> uh the trojans start bringing the horse in and troilus says the greeks are gone they're sailing away and uh so you're vicky you're free to go thanks for saving everybody she's like uh i didn't do anything but are you gonna let steven go no he basically releases her they sort of walk off and steven's like thanks thanks a lot 
Oh. And uh, Priam's excited for Cressida. And Paris brought the great horse of Asia. And Cassandra is like, you fucking idiots! Someone listen to me! <laughs> and then she says the, okay, the greatest, the greatest dialogue <laughs> exchange in the entirety of Classic Who so far. <laughs> she's like, whoa. Woe to the hi- house of Priam. Woe to the Trojans, I think. And Paris says, it's a, It's certainly too late to say woe to the horse. It's already on its way in. <laughs> it's such a good line. Whoa! It's such a good line that I think it ends an episode and starts another one. <laughs> it does. And we laugh just as hard the second time. <laughs> like, she started, like, you know, that's the end of episode three, Death of a Spy, and we're now at Horse of Destruction. But the end of episode three is that. Horse of Destruction starts, and she starts going, Whoa, unto the House of Prime. And Tony and I just start laughing. Before this, the, we're like, Yes! I'm glad they did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, this episode was probably the, uh, is there a doctor in the horse? Get that reference now? There is. There's a doctor There's in the a horse. There's a doctor in the horse. <laughs> like, if they did this serial today, the doctor would say, there's a doctor in the horse, and be really happy to be in the horse. I don't think we'd have this, like, reluctant, grumpy doctor. It would be like, all right, I'm here. We're doing a thing. What's going I'm on? in the Trojan horse. Can you believe that? I thought that was fake. I don't even know what's happening now. I'm so I'm so pleased by that whoa 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 joke. Whoa whoa whoa. <laughs> it is joke. too late to say whoa to the horse. I think that's how we should start naming our episodes from now on. Whoa to the horse. No, like we should have <laughs> like as puns. The ti- yeah the title the title name so that people can find them and then in parentheses, parentheses. a good pun. I'm I'm gonna do I think I am gonna start doing that stuff from the the podcast because I just did it with uh, Mad Props to Edith, which is very confusing actually until you listen to the episode <laughs> i know that's why it's great but they'll st- we'll start subtitling them i think but i think they should all be puns or something relevant or like puns. we might not be able to come up with puns all but right. yeah woe to the horse <laughs> anyway where were we <laughs> we got really excited by that one line you guys whoa 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 troilus is hunting down vicky why is that vicky releases steven she lets him out he doesn't get very far again all right oh and cassandra sends katarina after vicky to keep an eye on vicky which doesn't make any sense because later she just helps i mean kind of basically it's like vicky's about to leave and cassandra's like no you're not where do you think you're going you're our, you're our guest like here why don't you stay in this room katarina you stay with her see if she needs anything but definitely do not let her leave and then vicky's like well i'm stuck here and so she gets Charles to come in and she's like, dude, you do anything for me, right? Why don't you go do this thing for me? Why don't you leave Troy? Just go get out. And he's like, why would I do that? No, but I told you I would, so I'm gonna do it. Which basically she asks him to go capture Steven. But like, uh, Steven tells Vicky to to warn Troilus because they have a little bit of a scene where everybody's like admiring the horse and they're both out there and like, Steven's like if you really like Troilus, you should warn him. You should tell him. Tell him to get out. Yeah, Katarina's looking for Vicky though and they see her and then they're like they're trying to hide from her. Also, the doctor wants shock absorbers. He's in the horse like, I'm gonna throw up. This is a terrible mode of transportation. They're so loud in that horse, too. I was sitting there the whole time like, shut what the, the hell fuck up. up. <laughs> there are Trojans right outside. They can hear you. And then we have the Katarina left with Vicky thing. So Vicky sends Troilus off like on a fake mission to go do something and then he runs into Achilles and they get in battle. It's not good. Katarina fell asleep. That's how she got away from Katarina. Like she was watching Vicky and then she fell asleep and then she she went to talk to Troilus. Which, does anyone guarding people in this series ever not fall asleep? There are no good guards. None. none. Well, the uh, Trojan guards in the dungeon, they were were all right. Yeah, they kept (laughs) Steven in in line. Uh, I also want to say like Odysseus. Odysseus. Odysseus, whatever. (laughs) Odysseus is uh, just like talking about, you know what? I kind of hope Agamemnon and Achilles, they all die out there. And then I get I get all the credit for all this thing. And the doctor's like, whoa, I don't like you. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up, man. I don't like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They exit the horse and the doctor's like just super upset about all the killings that go on. Because it's 
basically his fault now, which sucks. And then we have Troilus runs into Achilles, and then shit goes down. Yeah, it's not good. He gets stabbed. They both get stabbed. Achilles hits his heel on He does. He, he like, trips he trips on his heel. Troilus stabs him, kills him. Well, he's dying, and then according to our reconstruction, it said he threw, like, with, like, his last remaining energy, threw his sword at Troilus, uh, wounding him. And then Achilles died. And then the gates open up. The Greeks storm in and everybody's attacking and fighting. And that's when the doctor and Vicky sort of meet up. And she's like, I gotta talk to you. I gotta talk to you. When did Steven get hurt? Oh, he's dressed as a Greek. Oh, when yeah. All he got the Greeks st- are invading. So he's fighting a Trojan. Yeah, and the Trojan, like, attacks him. But then, like... And he, like, gets actually hurt. Like, everyone else in the series so far just, like, twists an ankle every single serial. But he gets, like, actually hurt. He gets stabbed. And it's... I'm... Yeah. You're like, this is the most anyone's ever... Well, Barbara got poisoned that one time. People have been sick. They haven't been injured like this. Yeah, because, like, yeah, there's fighting on him. He gets stabbed. And then, like, somebody else... Like, another Greek, like, kills the Trojan that attacked Stephen. Vicky's like, get Stephen. Like, gets Katarina to take Stephen into the TARDIS, right? But, like, she talks to the doctor and then leaves. She hugs the TARDIS and goes away. You don't actually see them talking. She's like, I just need to talk to you in the TARDIS. She sends Katarina off to get Stephen. And she's like, just because I have a little private powwow with the doctor and then it, according to our thing she leaves takes a moment turns around like hugs the TARDIS and goes off and then the doctor watches her leave I did not know this was happening this episode no one prepared me for this sorry around this point Tony's just like what no 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 I was like this is this is happening this is happening now right now Oh. And then, uh... Because I swear, the last three podcasts, I'm certain all I've said is how much I love Vicky. <laughs> like, the last three have just been like, I love Vicky. I love Vicky so much. And now it's... Now she's gone. Joe has texted me while you're watching episodes saying how worried he is that you're getting so attached to her. I don't know what you're going to do when the doctor goes, when we when we hit two. But um, Cassandra's taken prisoner. Odysseus tries to take the TARDIS, and then it uh, dematerializes. Uh, and he's like, maybe he was Zeus. The only, okay, so that's going on. But while it's dematerializing, Tony is just like, Vicky is not on there. <laughs> Vicky is not on that TARDIS. Vicky's staying. It's official. It's final. It's happened. Which at this part, we still kind of think Troilus like could be dead. Yeah, it cuts to him right? in the desert and he's like... How pissed would you be? He's like, she betrayed me and he's dying in the desert. What if he was dead? That's how the play ends. That's how the original story ends. He dies and he believe that she betrayed him but she didn't right or did she in the play original play it's not really like her that did it it's basically Troilus and Cressida sleep together and then somebody else is like someone's just like flirting with her Diomedes is flirting with her and Troilus is like I need to go win back her honor but because she's the woman it's her fault well that's stupid so yeah the play ends with Troilus dead and Troy getting attacked and that's why when they first introduced her as Cressida I'm like Oh crap. <laughs> this is not going to end well for anyone. <laughs> for real, how pissed would you be if you like gave up everything? Ta- yeah, everything. And the dude you gave it up for is dead. I'd be like <sighs> Because you sent him away. I'm like, well this blows. And there's no going there's no getting back on the TARDIS. There's no like, hey, come pick me back up. Not at this point. She arrives, he's alive, and she's like, Oh my god, you've been stabbed. Let me help you. He goes, No no no. Tis but a flesh wound. I'll be fine. And then luckily my cousin's right over there. <laughs> great you arrived 15 minutes late with starbucks <laughs> uh, and 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 you were there and you were there oh there's a bright light over there i'm just saying this is the death dream this is that twist ending where you're like oh everything's happy now but no just kidding just kidding this is a hallucination right before he dies current like, about Creek Bridge. which this is the interesting thing about this episode is everything this is based on there's three different source materials and doctor who was like let's make this happy yes everyone in that city just died but this kid's alive we like him and here's his cousin and vicky's like let's go start a new troy that's kind of sweet the other interesting thing is that this episode is based on medieval literature and classic greek myths but it's all treated as historical fact that is a 
I'm okay with that. But it's an interesting thing for a show that is, like, meant to teach children, like, history. Because it's something I've always thought about with Classic Who, is, like, it doesn't seem like a kid watching will be like, be like, all right, this is fact, this is fiction. And this kind of muddies that water even more so. Where it's like, this is a pretty good, you know, explanation of, like, here's a rundown of some classic literature, but also it's being presented as a historical. I just am always interested in the idea of Doctor Who as an educational show and how much it achieves that goal and how much it does it. And how much it just confuses people. Or kids, really. Um, but uh, speaking Although of it's it being... Although it's helped us! Yeah, <laughs> we, now, we now certainly have much more historical knowledge than what we started with. And speaking of, though, of it being a death dream, we cut back to the TARDIS and Katarina's like, I am dead! <laughs> I like, am in limbo! Like, oh shit, she's still here. She's like super cheerful about it? I mean, she just accepts it. She's like, there's nothing I can do. I'm headed to the afterlife. This is fine with me. Are we going to Valhalla? I don't know. Is that where they go? That's, that's the wrong, <laughs> no. that's the that's wrong the heaven. Wrong. It's, it'd be like, what, Olympus, I guess? Olympus. Yeah. Well, if you're lucky. It's Olympus or Hades. So she thinks she's headed towards Olympus. That's why she's happy. This is not Hades. I'm good with this. I'm just but happy not to be in Hades. <laughs> Steven is just, like, in pain. Yeah, and, he's like... like asking for vicky over and over and over again and it's just oh, oh it's so sad. It's very sad he's so worried he's like where is she did you leave her behind did she make it out and then i was like it's it's okay she she's wanted to stay it's her decision she'll be fine probably maybe i hope she's fine but i mean i think that's that's basically how it goes down it's the doctor's like she's fine she she can take care of herself and then kind of out of steven's earshot he's like we hope i shall miss miss her and he's like oh but uh we need to get some drugs and that's the end of horse of destruction that i find so strange like why is there no medicine on the tardis good question there's previously it's previously been established that he has a like a first aid medical kit it's just like okay well i guess we don't have that anymore so let's stop at the next place possible uh, there's a difference between like a first aid kit and like some dude's got like a huge shoulder wound i guess maybe it depends how advanced their medicine is i would yeah. expect the tardis to have like an entire medical bay because it's an exploration ship is it not okay but does the doctor know how to use that shit fair enough probably not he's not that kind of doctor remember <laughs> pretty sure he said that in a previous episode but yeah that's the end of the myth makers we've got through it all yay you've guessed it on the episodes where the where the young companion leaves yeah <laughs> this new person i guess katarina katarina she is the new companion does she stick around though i've never heard of her before i could spoil you i could also spoil you but i don't want to all right don't get attached I'll let joe do that <laughs> don't get attached i'm just saying i've heard of classic companions i've never really heard of this person before i'm assuming she is not around for long she's a bit like uh, that one companion in uh, the ninth doctor oh what's his face how was it adam Oh, I hate him. I have opinions about him. I do too. We'll get to there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure we will. Many, many years from now. <laughs> we'll get to there. I find this one interesting because, like, so far, all the companions have either been from what is considered current for when Doctor Who is filming or from the future. And Katarina is from, like, way, way, way far in the past. From what I've heard, the reason they eventually get rid of her is because they didn't know how to write that. But, like, you can do that. But it's essentially the same as someone from the present traveling to the future. Like, it's it's literally the same. I mean... I guess it's just harder to, like... It's easier to relate to some, from somebody from the present reacting to all this future stuff. And it's harder to be like, okay, this is a watch. But it's, asking. it's been done. It's been done, and I've seen it done well. Uh, like, uh, there's a character like that on Stargate. Is there? Uh, who's, yeah, sort of like pop culturally unaware it's uh what's his name the, he's the dude he's the dude on stargate with like the big symbol on his forehead he's actually used to be he's sort of like a was a bad guy but not really i forget his name we just all of farscape uh, oh, that's still present. i mean anya is sort of that kind of character she's oh, yeah. sort of a old demon that doesn't really get all this new kid shit i mean that's like 90 percent of the cast on once upon a time and they do a really good job with that. The Captain Hook character has a cell phone. He's like, I don't know what it is. I push this button and sometimes she answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> See, I think it, if you just push it towards the comedy, I think you're fine. Which I feel like Doctor Who could do. I would like to see more diversity in companions. I've, I've said it on previous podcasts and I still believe it. I would like to see that in the current age of Doctor Who. That's what I'm saying. I would like to see, I'd like to see like... more robots. I'd like to see people from the future. I'd like to see 
multiple people people from the future people people from the present people from the past all of them all in one one tardis team i want an uh, ensemble yes. i'd like to see aliens all that i would like to see robot aliens <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, Shape-shifting I'm down for it. Penguins. I think right now we're kind of in a weird transition period. I feel like that's what this season is. It's the whole season is a transition. I think this we lost Verity Lambert this serial, and we got a new producer. Yeah, this is the first one that she's not on because when I when I watched the reproduction of Journey or Mission to the Unknown, it was introduced by one of the actors, and he went into this whole long history of it that I did not need. And he's like, yeah, this is you know the last thing Barry Lambert's on. She doesn't really come back after this. And I'm like, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, it's like it's we got a new producer, and let's be honest, a little bit of a spoiler here, but we're about to rifle through some companions, and then eventually we're gonna get a new doctor. We're gonna get a new doctor. So it's like they're they're trying to figure out. They've kind of and lost we're like the weeding out. Show. We're weeding out the historicals. After this season, there's like none of them for a very very long time which i'm disappointed in that's another thing i would like to see more of is straight historicals is it's not like we're in the past and oh the bad thing's an alien it's like we're in the past and we've just gotten sort of swept up in this one adventure that's happening yeah. and it's it's okay to have a story without any sci-fi in it you'll be okay i still think vincent and the doctor as strong an episode as that is it is fantastic i still think it would have been that much stronger without, if without the monster yeah I agree. Yeah, the strongest part about it has nothing to do with it. But apparently it's like a BBC mandate, so. See, and I think that's, I that's, think that's foolish. That's one of my favorite episodes of Torchwood, is when it's like, the whole episode, they're like, what alien could this be? What monster could this be? Turns out it's man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You knew exactly what I was referencing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, should we do final thoughts? Yeah, let's do final thoughts. Final thoughts! Uh, Jez, you are the guest. You start us off. Uh, I really liked this one. It, it's got great dialogue. It moves well, which I can't say for a lot of Classic Who. Especially missing ones. Yeah, it actually does fairly well just as audio, which I don't think I can say for any other one. I did the audiobook. I thought it was really well done. I mean, I would would have rather had an episode to watch, but if I can't have that, I'm happy with what I got. I'm sad Vicky is going to be gone, but I like that at least this time it was her own decision and it wasn't forced on her. But at the same time, I'm like, you are like 14. You met him three hours ago. What are you doing? You can't be that certain about this. Yeah, like the second she meets him, she's like, I'm gonna stay here. I like this place. Or it's like, you you don't even know him yet. Hell, I dated Joe for four years before we got engaged. And there were times when we were planning the wedding that I was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like, I'm picking one person to like, you know, live my whole life with. I hope it's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was Aww, a good choice. Thank you. I'm just saying, even, even when you're with someone for that long, there are still moments where you're like, whew. You can imagine, like, meeting me and then be like, yep, yeah, we're getting married. Right. Like, the next day. Like, well, I'm just going to give up everything I've ever known and uh, hang out in Chattanooga. Especially <laughs> if I'm, like, your jailer. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the way that they handled the viewer's knowledge of what happens in the Trojan War. Like, it plays on it really well. For those of you who actually know what happens in the Trojan War. Like me. Yes, like you. You know what things are coming. You know what happens to all these characters. And I think it does a good job of kind of playing with that. Like, yeah, there's a horse, but we're not going to do the horse. That's fake. But actually, it's really here. But we can't not do the horse. And I like that they changed the end for Troilus. Changed the ending for Troilus. Made it happy. Made it worth it for her to stay. So I think they did a very good job. I'm now happy to have been your historian, to set the record straight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I guess I'll do my final thoughts and I'll let you go. Sound All good? Right, let's All right. Do it. I really enjoyed it. I thought the dialogue was amazing. It was the perhaps the funniest serial. Which says not something we really talk about. We talk about the dialogue's good. But I don't think we mentioned just how funny it is. It is super funny. Like, we were laughing, like, pretty much not, I mean, yeah, nonstop. Throughout, throughout like, episodes. Oh, it was so good. Like, the, just the family dynamic with Cassandra, Paris, and Priam is just beautiful and hilarious. And even though I don't know anything about history, it was still easy to follow along and know what's going on. So even if you don't know the story, it's still a good serial. <laughs> Pretty much the only thing I really knew is like, eh, there's a horse and people are inside of it. 
And that's how they sneak in. So even if you just know that, that's enough to go off on to to get and enjoy this serial. Uh, really sad about Vicky. I knew it was coming. I forgot that it was so soon. It's so soon. I feel like we just got her. Exactly. But uh, <sighs> not entirely happy with the way she went. It's better than, it is better than Susan. But it's still, she's leaving for a boy that she just met, which is kind of meh. But at least, I would have liked to have kept her a little decision. longer. Yeah, it is her decision. So that's good. It might be a dumbass decision. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. The music was wonky, but that may have been just us. And uh, Paris is amazing. And uh, I, I'm i not looking forward to the next series. <laughs> Go, Tony. You guys pretty much said everything. I think I could easily say this is one of my favorite serials so far. It does have amazing dialogue. And not just the dialogue, but it's the characters. It has such amazing dialogue, I feel like, because you you get a sense of who everyone is and you care about that. Like, Paris, as much as he's just sort of an idiot, he still feels kind of more than just a one-dimensional idiot character. Like, there's something to him. Yeah, there's like the whole sort of like trying to please your family thing and but not wanting to like fight. They feel like a very real family and that's part of what makes the dialogue so great is it's like it's familial bickering and you're just kind of like, yes, I know this. I know what this is. <laughs> this seems very familiar to me. Uh, and that's part of part of what makes this episode so great. I was really bummed. I did not know. Did not know we were going to lose Vicky so soon. I thought she would be around for a little bit longer. And I was sad to see her go. And again, I do not understand people from the future choosing to stay before Wi-Fi was invented. And I w- that will never make any sense to me. There's got to, like, even if there's somebody really, really cute in the past, like, <laughs> there's people really, really, you bring them with you. Right! Say, hey, come on the TARDIS. Let me show you what a personal computer looks like. It's going to blow your freaking mind. Which they could have done, actually. Like, instead of sending him away, they could have just been like, Hey, Troilus, why don't you come with us? Why don't you hop on this TARDIS? It's amazing. There's no reason why you can't do that. There's nothing stopping you. They brought Katarina, who is no one. Like, she's not even a character that gets development this serial. I mean, and I get at a certain certain point, it's like, you know, we're traveling and now we want to, like, settle down, but... Okay, you like, but you've known this person for three hours, so like maybe take it a little slow. That'd be great to see on like a new episode where like someone falls in love with someone in the past, and they're like, "I'm going to stay behind," and the doctor's like, "Uh, no, just come with me." That right, would make just... much more sense. And then they do, and like they go on like their first mission, and they just like eh. just start hating each other. Now, do you drop that person back off into the pa- past? Just like, all right, well, not if it's the first doctor flying. If it is the first doctor, then you're stuck in the TARDIS. Yeah, or you end up in a completely different time period but no i this was an excellent episode i think most of the things i had to say had already been pretty thoroughly covered it was a huge just huge amounts of fun i said i think i mentioned that we had to go and look up who had written this episode because we liked it so much donald cotton by the way and he's only written another episode is that right uh the gunfighters which is uh next next season i believe it's this season oh it's this season okay you've got five episodes till gunfighters uh ray friesen will be guesting with us on gunfighters really yep neat that'll be fun i look forward to that one just from what little I know, I'm like, that's going to be a fun episode. That's going to be cool. I want to watch that. <laughs> I think, I, if I recall correctly, it kind of goes higgledy-piggledy at the end, but you don't care. <laughs> it goes what? It, goes it, what? it sort of falls apart by the end, but like you don't care because no. it's No, fun. it goes what? Higgledy-piggledy. <laughs> higgledy-piggledy. <laughs> higgledy-piggledy. <laughs> the next serial we have is the ginormous the Daleks master plan. Can I tell uh, you which, how much I'm not looking forward to that? That's going to pick up where Mission to the Unknown left off, which apparently confused a lot of viewers. Because imagine watching Mission to the Unknown, and then you have four episodes where you do not address where the Daleks won. Which is probably why they didn't air it in the U.S. Yeah, apparently all the people were like, "What's what was that all about? And so then you got four episodes, like f- I guess four weeks, where mm-hmm. that you don't even mention it. And then, and then the then Dalek master back. plan happens, they're like, forget we asked. I think it's 12 episodes. I think it's 14. Oh my god, is it 14? It's 14? Let me, I've got it in front of me. Oh my you. god. We're gonna die. We are. We're gonna <laughs> die. We're gonna have to split this up. I don't know if we We haven't made an to. official decision yet of whether or not we're splitting this up into two different podcasts. I have a feeling like we're gonna have to. I have a feeling like it's gonna be four hours long if we don't. It won't be four hours long. It will. We'll want to get through it faster. It's 12 episodes. Okay. It's 12. Nine episodes are missing. It is 12, but I think the guy who introduced the last one 
said it was 14, but, I mean, he was who knows who. It is 13 if you count Mission to the Unknown, because that's sort of the prologue to it. But, you know. It's really long is the point. It's 12 it's episodes, three of which uh, exist. So we're either going to have, like, a big one or we're going to split it into two. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to be next uh, for you guys. It's either going to be the Dalek Master Plan part one or it could possibly be uh our christmas special we're gonna be talk drunkenly pr- presumably uh talking about doctor who and the daleks the 1965 i want to say uh peter cushing film we're going to do that this weekend we're going on a road trip with jez yay and chris cherry and uh others will presumably be joining us i believe ray freeze and vincent el ray's a little think, on the border oh yeah i was gonna say i don't think ray will be able to make it it's his uh kid's birthday yeah, there might be some other people. I'm not sure yet. I haven't gotten total confirmation from everyone. But uh, that'll be fun. So next time it's either going to be Dalek's Master Plan or... It's going to be the Dalek's Master Plan no matter what. So. Yeah, it's going to be the Daleks. It's going to be the <laughs> Dalek's Master Plan or Doctor Who and the Daleks. Maybe both. So, like, it may be D- Doctor Who and the Daleks one day and then part one of the Daleks Master Plan the next day. That's the way I've got it scheduled out. If it's just, if it's not a two-parter, it's going to be Doctor and the Daleks one week and then the Dallas Master Plan next week. Or the two weeks after. You know what I mean. Anyway, thanks for listening. Check us out on WatchYourRassalon.com. If you like what you hear and would like to support us, feel free to go to Patreon.com slash Watchathon. And there's a bunch of cool rewards there. And you can see us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very awkward at this. You can see us. That's a Joe fact. With your eyes. <laughs> Jazz, any last words? No, thanks for having me on. Anytime. I'm happy to come back for a second episode. And uh, that's been the Watch Design of Razzlewind! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Then woe to the House of Priam. Woe to the Trojans! I think you're a bit late to say woe to the horse. <laughs>